Just do not feel good. Yeah, he's, he's out. Oh, sh oh, oh, sh oh, 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 fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. So after the fight, I got home, and uh, I don't want to see any of the fighters get hurt. Any any of them. I don't care how much shit they talk. Uh, everyone's good people. Everyone's everyone's cool. Um, we don't have a lot of douchebags, honestly. The fight game's full of great people. So I get home and I'm talking to my wife and I'm saying like, "Fuck, man! Like, uh, you know, he got fucked up tonight. I'm 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 like I'm worried about him. I'm concerned about him." Um, we go to sleep that night. We wake up the next day and everyone's talking about it. And it kind of like flipped everything. It's like, holy shit, like everybody's talking about this fight. Everyone's mentioning like, you know, body bags, Piper. All of a sudden, like, you know, within a day, that kid was a superstar. So um, it, it was uh, something with a lot of buildup, a lot of shit talking. The only thing he's going to be knocking out is my nuts off his face. And I hate to say that, but this guy can't knock out nothing. He's living off the, the little hype that he's going to get. Um, but everybody wants to see me knock him out. Uh, I won't submit him. Um, I won't decision him. I will knock out Adam Tia. <laughs> no, don't do that. He pissed off Pfeiffer and uh, it turned into something classic. Another something big that uh, kind of put us on the map. Well, listen, I love Joey Pfeiffer. I think his story is such a great story. He told me about how when he was a kid, he was around Balance Studios and he's known those guys for a long time. Four years old, I started mixed martial arts uh, thanks to my father. Um, he started me at four years old. He was learning jiu-jitsu, training with Steve Haig, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Sam Warpiza, Zach Minkowski, all these guys in the beginning. And uh, everything he was learning as he was learning it, he was teaching to me. Uh, so I've been around all the all the, the greats from Philly. He became really great friends with Sam Warpiza, and Sam is a mentor to him now. And Sam, to me, is, you know, is, is an icon in the sport in Philadelphia to me. He's just a great guy and was a great fighter. And, uh, you know, Joey Pfeiffer has become, like you said, Mike, like almost bigger than life on the regional scene. I'm here to chant the body bags, chant in the place. I'm a fan of this kid, man. He's gonna make some noise in the sport, Justin. Big time, he's gonna make some noise. Yo, he's a bad dude, bro. I can never remember any, uh, the only comparison I can make to the body bag chants in a stadium, when, in an arena when he's fighting is, Carmelo Marrero, who went on to have a great UFC career, the chance of Carmelo, Carmelo, Melo, Melo would, would take over a place. When the body bags is fighting and when he's done, it's like, it's almost like surreal, like you're not even there, just the chance of his name after he's done destroying somebody. I know Justin has a, a lot of good things to say about Joey as well. Yo, I still can't get out of my IT's face out of my fucking brain when he hit the canvas. <laughs> literally, it's like one of the fucking scariest things I've ever seen in my life. He literally looked lifeless. That's it, I got done screaming, oh shit, no fuck, for uh, maybe 15 minutes. But I finally stopped, and I was literally like <laughs> fucking face to face with Adam I tell you from like eight feet apart. I literally felt so bad for the man. Not only did he get knocked out in the cage, get his soul bounced off the ceiling, he fucking got in a car accident driving home when he left the hospital. Yeah, tough night. It's a shame, man, because he's actually a pretty cool dude. He's just nuts. And um, that was a fucking sin, man. It really was, bro. Like, not even, like, make fun of it. Like, he didn't even belong in the cage with Piper. Like, Joey, Joey was a professional amateur, dude. Like, that's just how it is. He's been in the MMA scene since he was freaking, like, five years old. Like, he was bred to be a fighter. And that, not only that, like, the story behind him is fucking incredible. Like, this is a kid that deserves everything, man. He really does. And it's because of what he's been through 
to get where he's at. I mean, and being with Sammy and Ricky, I mean, Sammy plays a fucking humongous role in Joey's life. Not only as a trainer and a mentor, but like something bigger than that. I think Joey Playford, when it's all said and done, he's UFC Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame, 100% for sure. Interesting thing about that fight. Um, so at the time, I believe Adam had 20 fights. Adam's tough as fuck. Um, a lot of people, that was the first time they really seen Adam down here in Philly. So they didn't know the Adam story. But when I proposed that fight, I went to Greg Serb, the commissioner. Uh, he was on the border about it. Um, he was like, ah, you know, Pfeiffer's only got three fights. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, um, Adam's got 20. And uh, Adam had never been stopped. Um, 20 fights. He lost a couple, but he's so goddamn tough and durable. That's his one thing. He's got a black belt and heart and toughness. Really tough dude. In fact, he uh, he actually beat Shane Wilson, who I believe was the number one ranked 205, number one or two in the state for a little while. Um, Adam beat him. Uh, I was surprised then, so uh, Serb uh, gave me a green light at, on that. He, he knew um, that Pfeiffer was coming from a tough camp, so he, uh, he said, all right, cool, let's do it. Um, then uh, Adam did what he does best. He's a showman. He markets really well. You can train all you want, little boy. I'm going to eat McDonald's and still beat your ass. You know, the fact that you can sit there and say, for a title fight, that you're going to sit around and eat McDonald's and think that you're going to come in and, and what my ass when I'm training every single day. It's kind of kind of comical. So I hope you're training, man. Whatever it may be, if it's in fucking poker, freaking women, anything, I'll beat you in anything. You're just a bum. As soon as I connect, he's, he's the first thing that's going through his mind is, oh shit, I need to get out of here. So And he's not going to be able to. When once again, you're going to be looking up at me when you're laying on the ground and I knock your punk ass out. He said, I'm going to eat McDonald's and I'm not even going to train. And I'm going to come down there and I'm going to beat up Peter Pfeiffer or whatever he was calling him. And uh, after the fight, he ended up telling me, I wasn't lying, dude. I was in a bad spot in my life. I really ate McDonald's and didn't trade. <laughs> dude, you can't. You can't do that. Like, why you're doing that? This guy's rolling with Ricky Meglarice and Basil and all them fucking monsters down there. He's doing stand-up with Sammy. Uh, I go out and cut the promo for the countdown video. And Joey's hitting gloves. And it's like bass, like you're in a fucking nightclub. And then like he's doing like these takedowns and then he's punching the pads, hammer fisting him while he's on the floor. And it's like, fuck man, this guy is genuinely scary. I tell you after the fight, he must have been concussed because after the he, before I when I was getting the mic for the interview. Good job, Pfeiffer. Uh, will you accept the rematch against me? What? He he wanted to he wanted to tell the guy, good fight, I want a rematch. And I'm like, you just got knocked out like one of the most hellacious knockouts we've ever seen we thought you were dead and you want to ask for a rematch it was like dude please go to the hospital and get yourself checked out you're not getting a rematch it was it was crazy that one of the most memorable knockouts justin i think that we've seen together sitting at cage side it was just like you said it was almost like a movie and the amateurs i mean guys they trying to get that done it's you're supposed to learn you're literally stepping in there like the Anderson Silva amateur fighting at the time. You know what I mean? Like this kid's in here beating the shit out of people, like for real. And you could tell 37 seconds into the fight that Adam IT was in way over his head. Way over his head. Joey hit him with a body kick, I believe it was. And right then I knew, I literally, I, I believe I say in my commentating, I'm like, this fight's not going to last longer. Adam IT is bit off more than he can fucking chill. Yeah. And. <laughs> Yo, he is a tough dude. He is a showman, you know, just straight up. I give Adam IT that, you know, with the underwear and the freaking smoking the cigar during his promo videos, you know, that's all cool. But at the same time, you can't play fighting. You don't go there and play this. You can play basketball, you can play football, but you can't play fighting. Some people take this shit more serious than the next. And it's okay. I mean, it's really okay. Some people just want to do this and say, oh, look, get some social media pictures and shit like that, you know, and, and be like, oh, look, I, I fought in the amateurs in MMA. And then there's guys that are legitimate serial killers, and Joey Piper happens to be one of them. It was scary because uh, he, he was bleeding pretty bad, and I, I, did, I actually didn't know where he was cut, where he was hurt. It was just, I mean, he looked like Kennedy in the fucking convertible. Like, the blood was coming out of the left, it was coming out of the right. I was like, fuck, man. Like, I, I, I like Adam. I enjoy Adam. I think Adam, 
is possibly the best person to sell a fight in our area regionally. Adam will talk so much shit, and either you want to see him die or you want to see him beat up whoever he's fighting, but uh, you want to see the fight. Adam is fantastic at selling a fight, but uh, after that fight, he looked like The weekend in the Blinding Lights video. You know, his face was fucking... His face was in another place, so uh, yeah. I'm glad he's all right, and I'd like to use him again. He wants to come back, but uh, just need him to be serious.